In this video I'll be showing you how to bake a cake if you've never baked a cake before and you are a complete beginner. Instead of the usual Victoria sponge that most people bake their first cake with, I've decided to go for a lemon drizzle cake as it's slightly different and personally I think it tastes a little bit better. The recipe is on screen now for the ingredients you'll need to bake your lemon drizzle cake. The most important thing at this stage is to make sure that all your ingredients are at room temperature before you start. I'll be making this cake by hand using a regular mixing bowl, there's no need to spend any money on expensive mixers or anything like that if you're just baking your cake for your first time as you may actually decide you might not like baking. Place your sugar and room temperature softened butter into a bowl and then work the two into a paste before then beating until it becomes slightly paler than it is already and then becomes also very fluffy. This will take you several minutes to achieve, although for this video I've used a time lapse as you really don't want to see someone stir in a bowl of butter and sugar for minutes and minutes on end. The next stage is to crack your eggs into a small bowl. We do this so that we can ensure that no shell gets into your cake and by putting it into the bowl you can inspect the bowl for any traces of eggshell and once you're happy that there are no eggshells you can then take a fork and beat the eggs up. Adding the eggs a little bit in stages at a time and then beat well between each addition. You want to make sure it becomes fully combined before adding the next part of the egg otherwise the fats from the butter and the egg will not mix together and you will end up with a curdled mix which you'll be unable to use. The next stage will be to add in our lemon zest. As you can see here I use a microplaner to grate the lemon zest. If you don't have one of those to hand you can always use a box grater. Just be careful whichever one you use to mind your fingertips as you grate the lemon zest. I've slowed it down for a stage just so you can see. When you're grating the lemon zest it is literally the outer lemon zest that you want to add in just to fragrance the cake. You don't want any of the white flesh to come into the cake as this will turn the cake bitter. As you can see here I'm almost letting the weight of the lemon touch the grater to grate the zest off with hardly any pressure at all on it. Mix in your lemon zest and then add in 6 ounces of the self raising flour. Once you add your self raising flour this is where the timing becomes critical as once the flour comes into contact with the moisture from the rest of the mix the raising agent will start activating within the flour so it does need to be in the oven rather soon to avoid the cake from collapsing. Add in the milk and mix well and then give one final mix using a plastic spatula to ensure that the whole bowl has been scraped and the mix is fully incorporated and then transfer it to a two pound loaf tin. You can see here I've used a non-stick one. If you didn't have a non-stick one you would need to grease it beforehand otherwise the cake will not release after baking. Place your cake mixture into your loaf tin and then spread evenly so it has a nice even level across the whole tin and then place into a preheated oven on 170 degrees celsius for 45 minutes. Every oven will vary so the 45 minutes is a rough guideline. When the cake is baked you'll be looking for it to be nice and risen and golden on top. Try to resist taking the cake out of the oven to check during the baking process as if it's risen but not fully baked taking it out of the oven will cause a cold rush of heat that will cause your cake to collapse. While your cake is baking in the oven now it's time to make the syrup that will make the cake nice and moist after baking. Place three ounces of sugar into a pan and then juice in two lemons. Whichever method you use to choose, I always use a traditional juicer, just make sure that none of the lemon pips actually get into your syrup as you wouldn't want to be chewing on one of those. Once you have had your sugar and lemon juice in the pan, place it over the stove on a high heat and wait for it to come to a rolling boil and then remove from the heat and allow it to cool gradually as your cake is still baking. If you are enjoying the video and you'd like to learn all sorts of cooking and baking then why not check out the other videos on the channel and while you're there why not hit subscribe and turn on the notifications bell. Give the pan a shake before putting on the stove and then as it's coming up to the bowl give it a gentle shake. Don't use any spoons or anything to stir it as any moisture could cause the sugar to crystallise. Add 
After 45 minutes, take your cake out of the oven, you should see it's nice and golden on top, and then to check that it's fully cooked throughout, take a skewer, I've used a wooden one here, although you can get metal ones, and then insert the skewer into the cake, wait a few seconds, and then remove the skewer, and it should be completely clean and dry when it's removed from your cake. Next take the spatula and run it around the edges of your cake just to make sure that it has completely freed up from the tin and once you're happy that the cake is going to become loose from the tin, turn the cake upside down onto your cooling rack. Give the base of your tin a couple of gentle taps, it should sound quite hollow if the cake is free from the tin and then remove the tin altogether. Then take your skewer and then on the base of your cake pierce it several times all across the entire bottom of your cake. Then take your lemon syrup and then using a spoon just gently start placing it all across the base of your cake evenly, giving it time to soak in in between each application. As you can see here it does slowly seep into the cake and just keep repeating this process until all your syrup has been used. After about 10 minutes or so, touch the base of the cake to check that it feels dry to the touch as all your syrup will have soaked all the way through and then turn the cake the other way around and then just dust the top with icing sugar. A lot of people like to put a glaze made from icing sugar and water over the top of their lemon drizzle cake although I'm sure if you've just baked this for the first time, icing sugar would be perfectly fine as you probably want to slice into it and taste your work. And now it's time to slice into the cake and taste your baking. Just be careful when you are slicing it as the sugar syrup does make this cake very moist so it will break quite easily but a nice smooth action with a serrated knife will cut the cake very nice. Hopefully by this stage you'll be feeling either confident enough to make your own lemon cake or you will have attempted it yourself and had the same results. If you would like to learn lots more cooking and baking why not check out the other videos on the channel and while you're there why not subscribe and turn on the notifications bell and why not start right now by checking one of the videos on screen now?